Hi there, um, welcome to my review of the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard version 2. Um, I'm going to try and do this all in one take, so apologies if, if it's not the slickest video out there. Um, right, so just by way of a bit of in introduction um, about myself and why I picked this keyboard, I'm not really what I would call a keyboard enthusiast, although my wife probably disagrees with me about that. But this is actually my first mechanical keyboard. Um, I was kind of interested in a 60% because I'm quite a big fan of Vim and so you know Vim doesn't really use any other keys apart from these ones here. Um, so I kind of was going along that line of thinking and I quite like the idea of the happy hacking keyboard um, with its control there and, and the way it's set up for sort of Unix. Um, and yeah, by sort of going down the rabbit hole, I found out about the ultimate hacking keyboard and it just, lots of things kind of appealed to me about it, um, particularly where it's kind of fully programmable. I wasn't actually that much into the split, to be honest. I didn't really, it's not something that would have been a, you know, a, something that would have been really important to me, um, in looking for a keyboard, um. So the fact that it joined together as a single keyboard and was a normal keyboard, that was also appealing to me. Um, I, my line of work actually doesn't really use much in the way of keyboards, so this is probably a bit overkill for me, but I do spend a bit of time on Vim programming. Um, most of my week though is actually just talking to people, but I do really appreciate having something nice to use that's a pleasure to use. So that's how I ended up with this. Um, yeah, in terms of my past experience of keyboards, you know, I've used all your regular office rubber dome ones. Um, actually, as a kid, I had a Model F, or at least my dad did. Um, probably didn't really appreciate it back then. Um, and I have used a Model M as well, and that's about it really. So not, not really, yeah, not massive. So yeah, the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard. Um, I guess let's start with the build of it. Um, it's got an ABS case, um, which it, it feels quite solid. Um, and, you know, it seems pretty well machined. You know, it's not absolutely beautifully perfect like a, you know, like a milled aluminium thing might be, but it feels solid. And I'm really impressed actually with the quality of, of this connector bit in the middle, lovely sort of steel plates and pins, uh, and that's really nice. Um, the palm rests are absolutely beautiful, they're, they're proper wood, they look handmade and, and sanded down. Um, the bottom of them are steel, bottom of here I think is, is ABS, I think. Um, yeah, so it, it does feel really well put together, um, so yeah, I'll give it that. Um, the keys are PBT double shot. Um, I kind of, I, I, this, is, this is all I've really experienced. Um, they have a really nice feel to them for someone who's not familiar with mechanical keyboards. They're kind of like, they're slightly rough, but it's like a sort of soft, stone kind of feel. Um, they are backlit um, and the legends seem, you know, they're pretty clear. Um, yeah, so it's pretty nice. I mean, I have seen, you know, the kind of funny, you know, fa fancy kind of keyboards that, that mechanical keyboards enthusiasts have. And I have to say, I do love all those different colour sets, um, you know, that, that don't shine through. I kind of do like them, but this is, this is nice. I like it. It, it feels nice. Um, the switches, I went for box white switches, um, and I have to say that's probably the most amazing thing about this keyboard is really the feel of typing on it. Um, they feel, the keys feel really precise. They don't really move in any other direction than, than up and down, and they feel really smooth, but they've got, they've got that um, tactility um, with the click bar switches, so they're the box whites are a, a clicky switch um, that uses a click bar to give you both the tactile feel and the sound. Um, and yeah, they just they just have 
they, they feel fantastic really a really real pleasure to type on um, it would be nice if UHK maybe offered some other switches they do offer quite a lot but the other clip bar ones I find really appealing like the box jade and the box navy so I might have been tempted to go for one of those if, if they'd been an option um, right so in terms of the layout of the keyboard obviously it's a 60 percent I've gone for the one with the left ISO key so I've got that extra key there which I do use in Vim um, it doesn't come with a right ISO key so you've got your sort of single height enter key which means that the tilde is a bit further away but the enter key is probably a little bit closer and um, that's fine that's not an issue for me at all um, you can see I've swapped around the function and control key and that's because I'm used to ThinkPads and that do it that way around um, and then just generally about 60% I guess um, I thought I wouldn't really miss a lot of the other stuff like the function keys and things but there are a couple of things that I do miss one is having an escape key up here because I'm just so used to hitting that um, not in Vim which I because Vim I've, I've assigned it to here and that's what I use in Vim but I just can't remember to do that in anything else um, so that confuses me a little bit still um, I don't really miss the numpad I'm quite happy with these numbers here um, but the arrow keys and the page up and page down are quite useful for browsing the web when you're being lazy um, and you just want to use one hand and that's I, I do miss that a little bit so but on the whole I'm quite happy with the 60% um, okay so in terms of um, the, the layers on this keyboard this is I think this is a real sort of really strong feature of this keyboard essentially I think that the two main keys that you have for layers is this one here labeled mouse on the left uh, and you can see when you use the layer key um, you can see the, the, the buttons that you've got program light up in particular colors so I wanted this initially to be control um, but then I kind of realized I only really use control W <laughs> and not uh, the other control like X, C and V, I, I kind of use the control down here. So I've actually only programmed that as control W. The rest, um, it's, got a, it's got a mouse capability. So I've programmed that to H, J, K, L, Vim style. And actually that is really convenient to have the mouse on the keyboard. I find I do use that quite a lot just for convenience sake and being lazy. Um, and yeah, I've got it programmed, so if you tap it, it's, a, it's the escape key, um, which is very useful in Vim. And then the other button here is this mod key, so that is really a feature of having a split keyboard, is that the space bar gets split, um, and you've got the left side of the space bar is this mod key, they can swap that around with the right. And again, it does this really nice job of lighting up which buttons you've got and, and what they do. Um, and this is it's fantastic so I've got you know sort of essentially your cursor keys here page up page down home end um, it's really nice I've got some shortcuts for moving windows about and then on the left here I've also got um, workspace switcher um, alt tab is mod D um, and launcher as well um, you know which is which is fantastic it's that that's that's really a killer feature um, of this kind of keyboard, I guess, and, and this one in particular. Um, the function key on the bottom here um, allows you to switch different layouts. So I guess um, you've got like Colmac and Dvorak. That's pretty useful, actually. So you could have a layout just for, you know, like lazy browsing of the internet. Um, if you just want to sort of lean back and use arrow keys for example or say you've got a game that uses um, cursor keys but you want that on the left side and you want this to be jump and that to be something else you know you can set that up you've got several that you can set up along there so uh, and, and the the, the uh, visual up here is, is pretty nice it's quite cool you can change that to anything you like um, yeah okay so I've talked briefly about the split. Um, I do think out of the ergonomic adapt adaptations to keyboards, the split does make the most sense to me. And actually, 
as soon as I started using this, even though I wasn't particularly looking for a split keyboard, um, but I found straight away that I do prefer it split and angled like this. And when you put it together or use another keyboard, you become really conscious of the way your wrists are twisted and leaning out to the side, which is not good for the tendons that have to go back and forth through your carpal tunnel. Um, so that is, that is straight away a nice thing about this keyboard. Um, what's not so nice is that I feel like I've had to slightly relearn touch typing for some keys. So Y and B, you need to use them you know, with your right and your left hand respectively. So if you haven't learned touch typing properly, you have to do a little bit of relearning. But actually that's not, that's not too bad. It happens pretty quickly, I found, even though I've typed for decades clearly using both my hands for the ones in the middle. Um, so you can set up the feet on the bottom here. These are adjustable. You can, you can move them around and take them. Yeah, you can. So they're a little bit, a little bit tough. I won't try and take that out just at the moment, but they are pretty secure, which is good. Um, but you can move the feet around to the top bit, the bottom bit, and the inside, um, and you can flip them out for a bit of extra height. So I, I find the nicest way is to have it slightly tented. That works quite well for me. You can make it a bit more tented as well, uh, like that, um, which is yeah. It's pretty adjustable and actually one thing that's really nice is just the way these two halves are adjustable and I find myself, you know, if you're working for a while, you, you end up moving them about um, just as you change your position, which is quite nice. Um, so I did think about maybe an orthilinear one, but I didn't really get orthilinear um, when I was looking into keyboards and I was a bit worried it might be too different for me to get used to. Um, one of the things about it being split, I, I didn't even realise I might have an issue with it split, but I like the way that I didn't need to use it split because it, it works perfectly fine together. Um, and that's something that I, I kind of, that, that's not that common in split keyboards and, and you know, um, just helps you, helps you feel confident that you're not going to buy something and then find that you can't use it. Um, I've kind of understood Orphalinia a bit more since I've got this, oddly enough, because having to relearn to touch typing, it's kind of made me think, oh, why are all the keys sort of staggered like this? But anyway, there we are. Um, right, so in terms of programming it, um, UHK have got something called the Agent software, which is a really nice bit of software. Um, it's a graphical user interface. Um, you just kind of click on the button, change it to do what you want, um, you can move, you know, you can change the mod keys and things, um, you can change where the mouse keys are, it, it's really customizable and the software is actually really nice, it, I'm really surprised given they clearly must have put a lot of engineering work into this keyboard so you might have thought that the software was an afterthought but it really isn't, it, it has never actually um, I haven't encountered any bugs or problems with it so far, so it's worked really, really well. As a Vim user, I'm keen on like command line things, so um, and I know that there are other command line type software, I think QMK or something like that, um, but I'm quite happy with the agent software, it does what I need it to do. Um, so, <clears throat> any issues that I've had? Um, I'd say there's two issues. One that I've had is a weird flickering that happens on the left side and then sometimes it dies. It's resolved by unplugging and plugging the cable in and you can see I'm using a different cable to the one it came with because I thought I'd change that and see if it helped. Um, I've had this keyboard plugged in now for about two hours this evening and I haven't run into the problem so I don't know exactly what it is. I've got a feeling it might be a static thing so if you're wearing a particularly staticky kind of jumper you might run into that issue but I'm not 100% sure. So that's one thing. The second issue is probably because it's such a good keyboard and having this mod key on your left thumb just gives you so much power to do stuff um, and again another mod key with your little finger that that is just such a convenient thing that you kind of just wish you had it on 
other keyboards, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so switching between this and my work keyboard and, and, and things is, is, is a bit of a pain, actually, um, because it's so nice and because you can set it up to be so, con you know, every, everything that you use regularly, just use it so conveniently. And sadly, I don't have the money to, you know, to get a UHK for every place of work that I work in. <laughs> Um, right, so overall, um, I would say you know, this is really well built, it's lovely to use. Um, I would say the ergonomic benefit of the split is real, it is more comfortable on the wrists, um, and the way it is programmable um, is, is, is really fantastic and it's implemented really well. Um, yeah, and that pretty much sums it up. So I, I really am a big fan of this keyboard. Um, I bought, you, you can buy a sort of GoPro case, um, which will fit this kind of keyboard. Okay, it's quite thick. Um, so a laptop case is probably not the right size for it, but more GoPro kind of size. And so you can carry it around and, and use it at, at places, which is, which is great. And that's actually, it's another thing about it being programmable. And the firmware being on here is that you take it with you. So you take, you know, you take all your escape key, control key, mod keys and, and things that that comes with the keyboard, which is which is a really nice thing to have rather than trying to set up your operating system to do that. Great. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about it. Um, I'll do a little typing demonstration um, and then I'll sign out.